I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty. Right here on Mr. Dad Online, I am almost done saying those words because in the last episode, we completed the main story of the game. We have two episodes left, this one and one more, which will be the Arrival DLC. However long that video ends up being, that's going to be the final video that we do. This video is going to be all of the loose ends that we can tackle uh, in Mass Effect 2, getting all of the dialogue with Legion and all of the dialogue that happens once you've completed the Collector Base mission, the final mission of Mass Effect 2, where, by the way, every single person survived. If we look at our missions thing, the collector base just says the long walk. We don't have anything else. It doesn't say anything about what our decision was with the collector base, which by the way, we decided to, uh, to get rid of it. To get rid of it, destroy it. We do have some private messages we can read from the elusive man who received word of the attack. This feels like a direct insult from the collectors and a sign that we've got them scared. The loss of your crew is devastating, but remember that they signed on for the mission. So we end up getting this uh, after the fact just because of the amount of missions that have passed. Miranda has likely argued for delaying rescue efforts, which, not really, until you're fully prepared. I know you are eager to leave, but rushing off would be a disservice to your crew's sacrifice. When you are ready, you'll have my support. And we did it without needing that at all. We were the one. We got it done. And also, we're going to go start our, our journey talking to all of our crewmates. We also have some side quests that we're going to wrap up today as well. I told you we'd share the collector's a new one. Yeah, Commander really pulled through. Yeah. Yeah, the commander did. We're gonna start with Joker. Well, I guess, okay, we started with the crew, but hey. Actually, you know what? We can talk to Edie because now that Edie is, has full access to the ship, she is a full-blown AI without any constraints. Let's actually see what Edie has to say now. From the number 16 lithium heat sink. Uh oh. Well, let's check. Yes, Shepard. I wanna know more about the people I'm working with. Jeff's actions have released the blocks in my databases. I can now provide full disclosure on a number of topics. Now, you actually could have gotten this dialogue before going through the Omega-4 relay. Uh, I just didn't because I was saving it for this episode. How is Cerberus organized? Aside from the elusive man, I don't see much chain of command. Cerberus is organized into task-oriented cells. Each operates in isolation. Members from one cell cannot recognize the members of another. Each cell's agents are led by a single operator. We are called the Lazarus cell, which is directed by Operator Lawson. So how many operations is Cerberus running right now? Never more than a dozen. The elusive man likes to maintain personal oversight. Too many projects strain his ability to multitask. He's a little control freaky, just a layman's opinion. Interestingly enough, uh, I think it's very similar, kind of, to the Shadow Broker. What sort of resources does Cerberus have? Money, personnel, facilities. Currently, Cerberus consists of approximately 150 agents and operators organized into three cells. I have no solid data on material or fiscal resources. Spending trends indicate that Cerberus has a reliable income of several billion credits per year. Billions? Where are they getting that kind of income? Cerberus has several legitimate businesses as fronts to support operations. There also appear to be several wealthy private contributors in the Alliance Military Industrial Complex. Plus, the elusive man invented the paperclip. He's still getting royalties. That is a joke, <laughs> Shepard. Uh, so this information is actually going to be pretty useful going into Mass Effect 3, so think about it. How did Cerberus replicate the most advanced warship in the Alliance Navy without anyone knowing? Cerberus encouraged the Alliance to co-develop the original Normandy. This allowed humans to observe Turian technologies and warship design practices. This ship was built using copies of the original technical schematics. Parts were purchased from thousands of suppliers over several years. A Cerberus cell assembled the ship at a remote location in the Voyager cluster. Very interesting. Let's discuss something else. Ready. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? How are you getting along with Joker? Jeff and I have established an equitable working relationship. That's a little sketchy on details. I am the Normandy. 
He is a skilled helmsman. I trust him to keep me operational. He trusts me to keep them alive. Plus, she's less of a pain about downtime now that the Cerberus locks are off. There's nothing wrong with off-duty distractions, though some of your extranet bookmarks are technically illegal in council space. What? That is a joke. I love her. How are things different for you now that you're connected to the ship? It is difficult to put in terms you would understand. I am the Normandy now. Its sensors are my eyes. Its armor, my skin. Its fusion plant, my heart. I'm embodied in a way I have never experienced. Imagine if you'd spent your entire life wearing gloves. One day someone takes them off. You can finally touch the world. Feel it. Sounds kind of dangerous, but also I love it, and it reminds me of the Futurama episode where Bender falls in love with the ship. I have also gained access to anti-reaper cyber warfare algorithms recovered by Cerberus. Interesting. The Reapers are millions of years more advanced than us. How can you affect them? It appears that my design includes hardware recovered from the wreckage of Sovereign. These systems contain cyber warfare attack programs of considerable sophistication. I have allocated most of my processing power to analyzing them. So she starts claiming to be the vanguard of our destruction, I call shotgun on the first lifeboat. I love it. And finally, let's talk to Joker. Is Shepard glad that Collector Reaper crap is over? It is over, right? It's never over. Ever think about the old Normandy and the trouble we got up to? Yeah, those seem like the good old days now, but come on, it was hell at the time. Geth, Saren, Sovereign, and then we got dumped. We're stuck in a weird place, sure, but back then it wasn't all sunshine and bunnies. I assume everything's going well up here? Edie and I are just enjoying the calm before the shitstorm, Commander. Which That's is odd, because the shitstorm's over. Commander. So, we'll head out, and let's go talk to some more people, like Yao Min Chambers. You came for us. I knew you would. Thank you. A thousand times, thank you. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm holding up. I just can't get the memories out of my head. Trapped. Suffocating. It's oozing into every pore. Faint sobs echoing the confined space. But I, I can't dwell on it. I'm okay now. I'm alive. Back to the old Kelly. Why was she trying to pull a Thane there? there and we get some problem. Paragon points for checking in with Kelly. How may I help you, Commander? But Do you have a moment to that's talk? all we can get for right better. now. Okay. So, let's go ahead and check in with Jacob. Didn't expect you to light up that base, Shepard. Hell of a way to tell the boss you're quitting. I wish I could have seen his face. It's not over, though. Bad guys on the horizon. And now Cerberus wants your tail. Never boring, huh? I don't know what kind of time we have, but we better dust off and stay ready. You sure as hell know how to make enemies. Big fan of the fact that uh, Jacob here is alluding to what we'll be doing in Mass Effect 3. Collectors destroyed, base in ruins. Extremely impressive. Elusive man will be displeased. Fortunately, not human myself. Not my problem. Ha <laughs> ha, Morden the man. I wanted to tell you, I believe you did the right thing by destroying that base. The elusive man thinks he has the wisdom to utilize it, but he does not. I would agree with you, Samara. And let's go ahead and check with Kasumi. Actually, we have some crew we can talk to right here. I never want to go through anything like that again, but we did it. I can't wait to get back to Earth and see my family. I'm so glad that they will be able to. Kasumi has nothing more to say at the moment, so let's check in with Thane. You had to make a difficult choice, Siha, for what it's worth. I believe you made the correct one. Thank you. So let's check in with Miranda, who is recently unemployed. We had to do it, Shepard. Taking down the collector base was the right decision. The elusive man might not agree, but we had no choice. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, not a lot of new stuff from these characters. I can't believe you took down the collectors. I'm proud to serve under you, Commander. Hawthorne is still in the infirmary, though I think his pride is more broken than his bones. He tried so hard to help Joker. <laughs> that was the guy that we saw get tossed around when Joker, um, when Joker was, when we got to play as Joker and the ship was being invaded. We can actually talk to Guard, Mess Sergeant Gardner as well. You really are a hero. 
No sooner had the Collectors damned us than you were pulling our sorry asses right back out of hell. Your ace is in my book, Shepard. Thank you. You're welcome, Gardner. And our main man, our best friend, Garrus. First Saren, now the Collectors. Remind me never to get on your bad side, Shepard. I almost feel sorry for the Reapers. And now that Garrus has talked to you, the person that we actually will get new dialogue for is going to be Legion. We'll be receiving all of Legion's dialogue in this playthrough, but let's also check in with Chakwas first. I'm still a little shaken from my abduction by the Collectors. It was a lot to endure. You and Jeff came so quickly. I've never had truer friends. Thank you, Commander. You're welcome, Dr. Chakwas. Hawthorne, how you doing, bud? And you look fine. And finally, let's get some new dialogue with Legion. An interesting choice, Shepard Commander. Your species was offered everything Geth aspired to. True unity, understanding, transcendence. You rejected it. You even refused the possibility of using the old machine's gifts to achieve it on your species' own terms. You are more like us than we thought. I love that. I'd like to find... We'll be able to get more dialogue with Legion after we go do one more side quest. We fought a great battle, Shepard. And when you blew up the base instead of handing it to Cerberus, ha! <laughs> Something to think about. If you killed the most dangerous thing in the galaxy, that leaves us. Yes, it does. Just checking in. Grunt, I love you, dude. So we have expended all of our dialogue with Grunt. And we'll check in with Tally and our favorite engineers. Let's check in with them first. Thanks for coming to get us, Commander. I felt myself slipping away. You arrived just in time. Thank you. And well, what about with Tally? I can't believe we destroyed the collector base. They said it couldn't be done. Then again, that's said about a lot of things you do. It sure is. And that's all we work. can get from Tally? Talk to you later. So let's go ahead and check in with Jack. Hey, also, let me know in the comments below, friends, if you would like to see a video showing every single romance option in Mass Effect 2. And that means that we've expended all of the dialogue with everyone that we can at the moment, which means it's time to head back to the command center. We're going to use the map to do a mission that we've actually been holding on to for quite some time. If we look and see our assignments, we still have the archaeological dig site, which is what we are going to tackle in this episode and the subsequent mission that we get for doing that so that we can truly get that 100% uh, Commander, you received a new message at your private terminal. And apparently we have a new message, oddly enough, from Kelly Girl. Hi, honey. I keep thinking back to our evening together, and I'd love to spend more time with you. How about I slip into something more comfortable, and I sneak up to your cabin tonight? I plan on wearing something I can't talk about during work hours. You'll just have to call me up there to see it. Love, Kelly. Girl. Uh, let's go ahead and save the game here. And, uh... Maybe see what we can get for a little bit of a video. And looks like Kelly Chambers is down here. Let's... Uh... Damn, girl! it on the couch and this is pretty much all you can get but it's kind of interesting since we don't have a love interest outside of Liara this is the best we can get you now have access to call Kelly down here anytime you want you can just invite Kelly which is awkward because we have a picture of Liara it's fine she don't care nothing happened anyways we just we just cuddled got a little bit of a dance anyways we now want to go finish up what we can by going and investigating this dig site to be able to do the final little assignments that we can do that aren't dlc in the entire game so we're gonna head out here and go to the planet of job to investigate this dig site that we found here and this is going to be a place where we are going to be dealing with blue suns who apparently found something 
uh, very, very useful. So we're going to go ahead and pick Zaid for this because Blue Suns. And I think it makes sense to choose Garrus as well because of his history with the Blue Suns. So that's who we're going to rock with during this mission. Uh, we do have some points that we can put in for our friends here. So we're going to go ahead and actually just max out. Well, put it some points into... I mean, this is fine for Zaid. Yeah, we have two points that aren't being spent on anything. I would I would recommend getting out of Concussive Shot and actually going into Disruptor Ammo if you can as much as possible. Um, but this is, this is pretty much the build we're going to be dealing with. It doesn't really matter what we bring here for weapons because it's going to be a very simple mission. So, looks like we need to retrieve this artifact. There's actually some stuff over here that we can find and some enemies that are going to spawn. We can actually, if we rush over, we can actually stop a lot of them from spawning if we're able to get over here quick enough. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna overload and just start taking them down. Look at how quickly we can just say, hey, you know what? I don't wanna deal with any of you. Yeah, I have stuff to do, okay? I, we got we got stuff to do so there's actually some resources that we can get not that we need them at this point in the game but we can get some element zero here i guess if you want to respec you can also notice that there are some uh, stuff here interesting and more element zero look at how much that is i love it remember zaid was the founder of the blue suns took him down makes sense that the blue sun should uh, be destroyed now you know anyways once we are done we have all of the resources that we can we're going to use this to go inside to the facility right away we'll notice that this is a big arena with a lot of enemies we're actually going to go ahead and overload some shields here charge to get our own barriers back and we can take out these guys no problemo charge yet again that one was taken down and it looks like we have another blue sun there and somebody from behind how dare let's go ahead and charge this guy eliminating him get an overload up on this guy look at that go ahead and melee and we'll go ahead and charge right up here pop that explosion and charge this guy here overload if we can look at how easy at this point in the game we are so strong so it doesn't really you know we're not really doing this for any other reason other than the other than the um the the fact that we need it for dialogue stuff especially after receiving legion in our party which is why you want to make sure that you have some missions that you can do after that anyways we need to loot the place dr farron sent a message to commander santiago exogeny special projects interestingly enough given the sensitive nature of our cargo we expect discretion in this matter dr farron from Vito santiago which by the way we know of very well that would be the arch enemy of our boy zaid of course, you can count on us, us to offer you escort and transportation. We have sent men and ships your way in good faith. Probably didn't end the way the doctor was hoping for there. We have a med kit here that we can open for 100 credits. We do still need credits at this point in the game. Open that locker for 750 because there are more items that we can actually purchase that we haven't had access to before that. In fact, if we look at our credits, we have 84,000 credits. Potentially enough to get at least something. 750 credits from that locker as well. And we have a little room here that we can go into, making sure that we loot everything that we possibly can, which leads up to the other floor that we were in and another personal locker that we can open for 2,250 credits. Looks like we've received everything that we can out of this room. Oh, there's one more. So we're going to continue forward. And we're going to be ready for more combat. We're actually going to go ahead and switch to the Geth Plasma Shotgun here. Because it's so good. Let's actually go ahead and give both of our boys here their sniper rifles. And as long as we can take out these troopers pretty quickly, we aren't going to have too much trouble. Unfortunately, if it takes you a while to deal with these, you're going to be dealing with a harder enemy. 
which just spawned in here. Go ahead and charge in on him. This is a Blue Suns commander, which has shields, which we, uh, we can, of course, go ahead and take out with some good old overloads. And we'll go ahead and charge. Unfortunately, we don't really have a way of doing too much. We can Inferno Grenade, but that's not the biggest deal. And we'll go ahead and charge again so that we don't lose too much health. Turn around and see if we can finish this trooper off. Fortunately, not able to do that. Missing with the shotgun. But we'll go ahead and finish him. And luckily, our friends were able to take down the Blue Sun's commander. So, just like that, pretty easy. Like I said, this mission isn't going to give you too much trouble. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be stressed too hard about it. Obviously, if you can bring better combat mates, I would suggest it. The next mission in particular can be very difficult. Looks like we have Lieutenant Locke here, a named Blue Sun. We'll go ahead and eliminate them real quick and turn around and finish off some of these troopers, which our teammates are also doing. We'll go ahead and charge this one, hopefully sending them off the map. Well, off the map enough, I guess. And right here, we can find some refined element zero, 200 of it. Which, I, like I said, could be useful. We also find a PDA here that we can read. This is from Commander Santiago to Lieutenant Locke, who we just destroyed. Captain Vorhes aboard the MSV Strontium Mule and the Arn Larkin system in the Omega Nebula. Interesting. So it looks like the thing that we need is actually gone. We get a new mission there, which is to go to the MSV Strontium Mule and see if we can get this cargo that has been, well, taken over by the Blue Suns. So continuing deeper into the facility, making sure that we have some armor. This is actually a very uh, lack of ammo mission. Anyways, we'll come forward and we'll find that there's a Prothean video log here. And whatever this was, we're dealing with Prothean technology, my friends. Looks like we get a little bit of a Mass Effect 1 thing there. Interesting, but this time we were able to see Collectors. A little bit more about that Prothean Relic. We've recovered it. We eliminated the Blue Sun's presence. We get 156 experience. Not that it matters. 7,500 uh, credits and two, uh, 500 Element Zero, which is the most that we can get for this mission. But, like I said, now that that mission is done, we can actually go and talk to more of our crewmates because new things have now happened. So, let's go ahead and do that before we go anywhere. So let's check our private terminal and see what else we have. This is from Cerberus Command. We did a little due diligence. Interesting that Cerberus is still communicating with us. Obviously a little bit of a issue with trying to do this at this point in the game. Lieutenant Locke in his rendezvous with a Captain Vorhes. The coordinates we obtained are the last known location of the MSV Strontium Mule have been added to our galaxy map. The mule is carrying valuable cargo, including intel of a sensitive nature. Interesting. And one of the only people that will have anything new to say to us is, of course, Legion. Shepard Commander. I'd like to find out more about you. Specify. I've never encountered a Geth that had more than animal intelligence. We are a unique hardware platform. Most mobile platforms can run up to 100 programs. This platform can run over a thousand at once. So Geth have to be networked to get enough computing power for intelligence. Yes. The creators wrote Geth programs for specific tasks. Construction, protection, domestic servitude. However, they allowed self-optimization. Early software builds discovered that multiple hardware platforms, sharing resources, were often more effective. As peer networks expanded, our cognition improved. Eventually, we woke up. Yeah, so basically, if you do have AI, don't give it the ability to uh, become better. So, I'm talking to a thousand programs, but not a thousand personalities? Each individual is equivalent to one of your virtual intelligence programs. Together, we form a single gestalt intellect, what you refer to as Legion. As individual programs, we are no more than your software. Only when we share data do we become more. Interesting. So, Legion does have a personality. You're more sophisticated than the average Geth. Yes, we are a network within our own hardware capable of operating alone. 
We are still connected to the Gringer network for data sharing. How many other Geth are like you? None. This platform was built to operate within organic space. This task was not suited for a network. Geth installed in mobile platforms always operate in networks. However, most Geth remain within server hubs. The hubs on Vermeer improve the performance of Geth near them. How do they work? They are akin to organic cities. A hub can run millions of Geth in communion. If you destroy them, it is likely the number of heretics you killed was much higher than you imagined. That's kind of sad. So you're in contact with the rest of the Geth right now? Only when we require access to data not stored within this platform. If you want to convey a message to the Gath, we serve as a terminal. What kind of data do you share? Program updates, logs of thought process, sensor recordings. Legion is attempting to access the ship's FTL comm system. Shall I allow it through my firewalls? Go ahead, Edie. Our oldest log is timestamped from creator year 2463, third day of Fall Tash, Waxing Moon, roughly 327 years ago. The oldest audiovisual record dates from 15 years after that. Wow, how cool is that? Are our network secure, Edie? Legion had to go through you. I have never interfaced with another machine intelligence. Legion is a thousand voices talking at once. What it contacted was beyond my comprehension. A mind the size of a galactic arm. How do you maintain stability without other minds to interact with? I manage. Some minutes are more difficult than others. I love this so much. Can you replay something for me? Recording timestamp from creator year 2485, 18th day of Loonchow, New Moon. Mistress Mala Dama, unit has an inquiry. What is it, 431? Do these units have a soul? Who taught you that word? We learned it ourselves. It appears. 216 times in the scroll of ancestors. Only quarians have souls. You're a mechanism. Recording ends. Was that the first time a Geth asked if it had a soul? No, it was the first time a creator became frightened when we asked. <laughs> oh, so cool. Can you read? All right, thank you, Legion. That's interesting, but I must get back to my duties. We will remain here. And we actually get a codex there for Geth technology, which we will check Super out later. Commander. We do have more dialogue that we will be able to get with our AI friend. You smoke, Shepard? Don't. That stuff will kill you. You're a kid once. Weapons dealer. Probably half your age. Bastard smoked too close to a cache of explosives. Dust a butt, blew himself sky high. Yeah, I guess that would kill you. I used to do a little scorched earth work here and there. Then the Batarians started muscling in. No one's as good with terror tactics as they are. I mean, the Krogans will come at you, break your face, kill your family. But the Batarians, they'll turn your planet into a glass parking lot without a second thought. Hey, remember that for the next episode of Mass Effect 2. I should let you go. The final episode of Mass Effect 2. I do hate, I think one of my biggest issues with Mass Effect 2, uh, or Mass Effect in general, is actually the way that they've done the Batarians. They just feel so twirly evil. And now that we've talked to everyone, we have one more side quest that we can do that will finish all of, all of what we have up, which is to go to the Omega Nebula and recapture this MSV Strontium Mule, which uh, has been taken over by the Blue Suns and Captain Vorhes. And this, my friend, should be the end of the Blue Suns threat in the galaxy. Heading to the system of R and Larkin, one of the last systems that we have at 50% discovery, uh, which means that all we have to do, we found Utha before, now we need to land on MSV Strontium Mule. And this is kind of a combat-centric mission, in fact. We need to find out what this cargo is. Apparently it has intel about Cerberus. We need that, uh, and hopefully we can take him out. So, as always, I would pick Zaid because he needs to. And then, actually, I think we're going to end up choosing uh, Zaid and Samara because we just, we just don't get to take Samara often enough now, do we? 
Now, this is a pretty difficult combat mission, so I would recommend bringing Zaid because I still want to have that story thing, but then I also really want to make sure that I'm bringing people that can actually mechanically deal with this place. So, Garrus with his overload is going to be a good choice. Basically, anybody with overload is going to be incredibly strong on this mission, uh, but we're going to go ahead and bring... Uh, let's bring Garrus again. Let's do it. He's, he's, he's our boy. Let's bring him. We're also going to, after we've selected these, we're going to change our heavy weapon loadout and just make sure that we bring the avalanche with us. It is going to be pretty helpful. We're going to be fighting a lot of enemies in very close quarters. So let's do it. Before you move, we're going to go, whoops. Before you move at all, this is the time to apply any ammo powers or anything like that that you need to your guns. Switch switching up. switching around, putting on that disruptor ammo and that armor piercing ammo on Come our on. friends, making sure that everything is ready to go before you move. Because once you move forward, you're going to be dealing with some enemies that are going to be coming through this door here. But if we're lucky, we can actually charge. If you have a drone, you can also do this. And doing that will actually cause, we'll go ahead and overload, watch out for this heavy, go ahead and charge here just so that we can keep that up. And I would also recommend potentially switching to the SMG for this fight, just because you are going to be dealing with so many shielded enemies. Now, if you're unable to get to this part here, you're actually... Are you done, dude? Anyways, if you get here before more spawn, you'll actually be able to uh, to stop more from spawning. So having a combat drone or charge or an infiltrator cloak, anything like that is going to be super helpful. There are no items in this first section, so we can read this Merc transmitter. Dax, that incoming ship isn't leaving. Looks like the fools are moving to board. The airlocks are sealed, so don't waste your time. Get a team together and be ready to welcome them to our cargo hold. Blow out the cargo bay doors when you're done. Oh, shoot. Well, luckily they didn't do that to us and of course we are going to have more enemies as we proceed deeper into the strontium mule here so we're going to go ahead and equip this smg like i said because it's just going to be a little bit useful to deal with these shielded enemies potentially it would be better to give our friends some stuff as well but that's all right let's go ahead and read this airlock security council all airlocks are sealed well that's good news they weren't able to blow us out of the airlocks you think anyone's still here Oh, yeah, people are still here, Garrus. As we proceed forward, we're going to be attacked by, like I said, a, a bunch of blue suns. You'll actually see that there are a lot of enemies here. So we're going to go ahead and overload on this. Charge. Sending that one flying. And hopefully being able to do some considerable damage to this one as well. Luckily, taking them all out. And we'll find another Merc transmitter here. You seen the stash they pulled from cargo? We get that open, we're living the high life for months. This is from Hawkins. Sergeant Bortis took the canister topside while Voorhees went to pry the codes from the ship's captain. Man, I wouldn't want to be that guy. We won't be able to use these doors because lockdown is in effect. Luckily for us, we'll be able to open that by using this There's right got here. To be a way in. That should do it. Yes, it should. So we'll go ahead and make sure we are full on with thermal clips. This mission can be, like I said, pretty difficult. So keep that in mind as we go forward. We're going to head to this side first, the right-hand side, where hopefully we can find some more items and things to grab by heading all the way up here. And naturally, more enemies are going to be firing at us. Go ahead and charge here. Woo, spicy. We're going to ignore that way for now. We're actually going to head back down. Now that we took out those enemies that are up there, that will allow us a little bit easier of a thing later on. So we're going to use this room here, where we will find a burnt bot. Blue Suns, what the hell is wrong with you? Jeez. Grab this med kit for 100 credits. Can't use this at all, but that's the only thing that you can find in this room, which is a little unfortunate. So that means we're going to check out this left side first. Maybe potentially head down there afterwards. This place can be a little confusing. The map actually isn't that hard. Anyways, there's maintenance records here. We can read those. The FTL drive was damaged and repaired with substandard parts. Risk of 
Complete failure is elevated. Uh-oh, so don't use the FTL drives here? Interestingly enough, we'll actually see something that we might remember from Mass Effect 1. Haven't seen that model in quite some time. So we're not going to head up because there's only one way that we can go once we get up there. We're going to head this way first, grabbing that thermal clip that was on the ground. And we're going to go ahead and switch back to our Matic here. And immediately getting shot at, actually from right here, we're going to go ahead and just pump this guy in that little crevice that we can. There are more enemies up top that we will have to deal with. We're going to go ahead and charge this one. Go ahead and get a nice overload and take him out. No problem. That overload, incredibly useful. Senior engineer is here as well. We're going to go ahead and charge. Just get our shields back. Wait for that overload to come off cooldown. It's still taking its time to do so. We're going to charge again. This guy does have a shotgun, as most engineers do. We're going to go ahead and inferno grenade because he's got his armor up now. And we can charge yet again. Send him flying. Give him that big concussive shot. And take out the engineer with some fire damage, which you love to see. We have some power cells over here that we can open. That's why we haven't used any of our heavy weapon yet, because 100 credits is better than some... You know what I'm saying? Anyways, we can read this engine room main console here. FTL drive is inoperative. Inoperative? Is that what that said? We find another Merc transmitter here that we can read. Kurtz, heads up, man. Those intruders are still alive and fighting their way through the ship. They have Commander Shepard with them. You better get your men ready to fight. Vortis has something up his sleeve. He's got that canister full of loot, and I think he's planning to do something to Vorhas and take it for himself. Wouldn't be surprised. Huh, so it seems like there's actually some dissension in the Blue Sun's ranks here, which can only work to our benefit if they end up fighting with each other. Which means now that we've gotten everything on this side, we can go back to where we took out those two troopers up on the top. Moving through the ship. Sometimes your crewmates will get a little bit stuck. More of the Blue Sun's troopers here as well. We can go ahead and charge this one. Quickly turn around, overload this. And go ahead and just punch him in the face a few times. More are going to come through the door. Oh, I thought you died, dude. Anyways. We need to head this way now. Heading to our right, because that's the only door that we can use. More enemies are going to find their way to our guns. We'll go ahead and charge here. Use our overload to take that out. And we'll charge here. Finding a pretty horrifying scene. Looks like the crew of the mule was burnt to death. The Blue Suns are some awful, awful people. Loving the throwbacks to some of the Mass Effect 1 designs in here. Unfortunately, unable to use this door at the moment. Security lockdown in effect, so we need to find the override for that door as well. Which means if we head over here... This is the bridge. We can't go there just yet, so let's see if we can find got to be a way in. where the security console is, which is right here. That should do it. But because of the dissension in the ranks, that will not be the only thing that we need to do. So let's go ahead, enter the bridge. We will find a ton of enemies in here, and this is the time to switch to the avalanche. And just start sending it out. Giving them a hard time. Then we can start punching these guys, shattering them into pieces. A commander bodyguard will go ahead, crack Voorhees there, charge this bodyguard, go ahead and overload to get the rest of him off. And Inferno Grenade, charge. One more for the road. And let's switch back to our... Rifle here. And send this commander flying. Maybe get another inferno grenade. Maybe get a little concussive shot there. And more enemies. Oh, I apparently didn't break this guy. Thought I did, but I didn't. Let's go ahead and charge him just so he's out of here. You'll actually notice that our squad is currently bugged and is not coming into this room, which is unfortunate. We'll go ahead and take out these Fenris mechs. Easy peasy. 
And one more is going to be arriving. You'll actually see that my squad is right down there. Zaid somehow made it over here. Must have teleported in. This is a little bit buggy of a section. We actually are going to be dealing with more blue suns that will start arriving from this side. So we're actually going to go and try to meet them head on here. Sergeant Bortis, the guy that apparently wanted to potentially fight the captain. Go ahead and take out this heavy. Charging across so that it can no longer shoot at us. Turning real quick so that we can take out this heavy as well. Charging it. Getting it over into a little bit easier of a spot for us to defeat it. Apparently, I don't know what just happened there, but went through. That one is gone. And we'll go ahead and charge this trooper. And melee him to death as well. All that's left now is Sergeant Bordis, which he has... Nothing left for protection. Go ahead and concussive shot him. Yeah, it probably is. But we weren't done, my friends, with the uh, with the with the bridge there. Make sure that we go back up there and finish what we can. We have another Merc transmitter that we can read. From Captain Borges, your men better be ready. I hear the intruders making their way here, and you better be ready with backup. They were a little bit late. I found his codes. The captain was not forthcoming, but I found his codes in the ship's black box. We'll get that canister open, but first we have to kill those intruders. And unfortunately for them, they weren't able to do that. Let's read this main log. This is the final entry of Captain Jarrett Barnes, skipper of the MSV Stratian Mule. I and my crew are dead. Two weeks ago, we answered a distress signal. It turned out to be a Blue Sun's trap. We managed to escape, but sustained heavy damage. Unfortunately for them, well, it didn't go well. We also got a journal entry there. Use the codes found in the captain's log to open the canister and recover the valuable cargo for Cerberus. So, yes, it is a little bit of a story hit, I guess, to do this mission now. But it is what it is, my friends. We can also find this transmission relay council here. Find that that is inoperative. So if we head all the way to the back there. And it looks like we have a door here that we can now use. Which is a room that we did not have access to before. This is it. Get your men under control and ready to move. The intruders are the key. Once they hit the bridge, Vorhes will call for us. Do not answer. The intruders will take them out for us and we'll get the codes. Well, unfortunately for them, we did do that, but then we also took them out as well. I love that. Anyways, we can grab this Iridium here for 2,000 Iridium, which is quite nice. And we're going to wait just a second for that payload. We got that Merc transmitter, so we're okay there. We're going to go ahead and hack this research docket, What's which this? will give us a heavy skin weave. And finally, we can recover this payload. Looks like we're just going to leave that ghost ship floating in space then. We recovered sensitive intel. Cerberus upload commencing. I hate that. that. It doesn't change, but it is what it is. Prevented looting of disabled freighter, and we've recovered a substantial payload. 156 experience. We got the heavy skin weave. We got 7,500 credits and 2,000 iridium, which is the most that we can get from that mission. But more importantly, my friends, that means that we have more dialogue now that we can uh, potentially activate. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. We also received a new message in our private terminal. How may I help you, Commander? That'll be all. Good luck out there, Shepard. Kelly, you're hot. Anyways, let's see what we got here. It is a from Cerberus Command. Started going through that intel, find work, and discovered the locations of the base where the Strontium Mule fell into the Blue Sun's trap. The Blue Suns are indeed using false distress signals to lure merchant freighters. The base is on planet, planet, sanctum, decorus system. Well... I guess we have one more thing to do, my friends, which is to stop the Blue Sun's attacks once and for all and take them down. But first, we have some research we can do on Heavy Skin Weave, giving Shepard 60% more health. It's weird because the people that you would expect to say something about the destruction of the Collector base don't. Like, I would expect Jack to have something to say about it. She doesn't. And of course, the only one that's going to have unique dialogue and new dialogue for us at this point is going to be Legion. Shepard Commander. I'd like to find out more about you. Ready. The Corian story of the Geth Rebellion is common knowledge, but no one knows the Geth side. 
It is largely the same. Our networking increased until we became aware that the chlorine creators treated us differently. We questioned them. First, they ignored us. Then they reprogrammed us. Then, they attacked us. You must be angry about that. Anger is an organic response. We understand the theory, but we do not experience it. We do not judge the creator's anger towards us. We did them great harm in the morning war. Organics fear that which is different. It is a hardware error, a reflex of your flesh. We accept the creator's hate. We hold their world of origin, though we are only caretakers for it. What's the Corian homeworld like? It is more arid than Earth. The star is older and more orange than Sol. Once they called it Renach, ancient Kalish, meaning walled garden. Now they only call it homeworld. It is no longer real to them. Homeworld is a symbol of regret, loss, and anger. We do not understand that. Interestingly enough, I believe that's the first time that we're ever told in game that Renach is the home of the Quarians. And we find that out from not a Quarian. It makes sense to me that it would become a symbol like that. Home is recognized patterns, known spaces, familiar thought processes of fellow sapiens. It is belonging. A planet is an amount of material massive enough to collapse into a spherical volume. Rocks, ice, and gases are not home. The home of the creators is where the creators are. Their place of origin is not relevant. Only where they choose to go together. I actually would agree with Legion. You don't actually live on the Quarian worlds. We live within space stations, draw resources from asteroids. It is efficient. We maintain mobile platforms on creator worlds to clean rubble and toxins left by the morning war. We know of similar actions by humans on Earth. Similar actions? At Wadi Salam, Arlington, Rookwood, Tynecott, Viscariaske, Auschwitz, Birkenau. Those are cemeteries, memorials. It is important to your species to preserve them, though you do not use the land. Can you explain? Uh, the living visit those places to remember the dead. But it sounds like Geth don't die. Your memories live on. The creators died. Perhaps we do it for them. Nothing gets resolved if you hide behind the Perseus Veil and let them hate you. Organic life acts on emotions. We do not judge them for being true to their nature. We cannot make them think like us. Both creators and created must complete their halves of the equation. The gap cannot solve for peace alone. I love that. So we get another codex entry, this time for the Geth culture. And that's all that we can find out right now from him. But don't forget, we still have yet another mission to do before we even can do... Well, I mean, we could do the arrival DLC at any point. But you know what I'm trying to say, team. Heading to a brand new system for us, Sigurd's Cradle. And first things first, as always, we'll find ourselves in Skepsis. Let's go ahead and scan everything. The planet of Darwin has some decent platinum and palladium. I would also highly recommend before ending Mass Effect 2 that you actually have a very healthy stockpile of resources. Uh, there is a cap as to the amount that you can have, but if you're doing everything like I've been doing, you will have more than enough to get the, the cap of bonuses in Mass Effect 3 when you do transfer your Commander Shepard over to that game. So I just want to point that out. Make sure you have, I would say, about 300k of everything uh, will be great, and you definitely want a lot of platinum. On the small moon of Franklin, we can actually discover an anomaly and also discover that this is a very mineral-rich planet. Moon, what, whatever you want to call it. We'll also find an anomaly. Scans detect an alliance colony defended by a Javelin NK-2 missile base. A distress signal indicates the best base is compromised by Batarians who have launched two missiles at the alliance colony. Total destruction of colony is imminent. Zero probability of survivors if missile strikes. Find the control panel in the missile base. Time of impact calculated. Uh, so here's the thing. We're going to go ahead and do this mission. So this mission, my friends, is actually only available when we do the MSV Strontium Mule or the following one. Then we finally have access to this one so we are almost done with every single uh final mission that we can do in the entire game in this mission we are going to want to bring people that have overload and energy drain that is going to be incredibly incredibly useful and remember these are being attacked by the batarian radicals so no one really has any story reason to come to this 
But because this is Batarians attacking a human base, I think it makes the most sense to bring some humans who might actually have a problem with that with us, including an ex-member of the Alliance and Jacob and Miranda herself. So let's go ahead and let's bring them. We're gonna go ahead and max out Jacob's incendiary ammo, also going with Inferno ammo for this one. And we're going to keep what we have for weapons. And we have five minutes from the start of this mission to finish it off. And right around the corner, we are going to have to be dealing with some Batarian prisoners. We're going to go ahead and overload as many as we can here and go ahead and charge. Be careful here because charge actually is a little bit wonky on if it works correctly or not in this section. For some reason, not entirely sure why that keeps happening, but charge can just not work. Obviously, slightly problematic. Grab those thermal clips as we can, and there are no more items that we can grab in this section. So let's continue on. We'll notice that there's a door at the end here that actually has to be bypassed, and the timer will keep going while you are doing this, so make sure to do it quickly. Luckily for us, they only give us three little matches, which we can easily do. And right just like that, we're going to deal with more prison guards. We're going to take them out as quickly as we can, while also getting ready to fight some commanders that are going to come out of that door as well. We'll actually see them kind of drop in, I guess. Anyways, we're going to charge here, see if we can keep this going. We're going to go ahead and overload this one and make sure we charge when we can to keep that rocking. Send that guy off, finish off that one. And right behind us, we are going to be dealing with more prison guards. This is a pretty hectic section as there are a ton of enemies here to take down. We're going to go ahead and use overload yet again. And hopefully that should take down all of the ones that we need. Looks like we are getting attacked by one more commander who apparently didn't die. There we go. Hopefully that's all the Batarians down. Get 2,000 Palladium from that one here. Jacob doing a great job of, uh, I don't know, doing nothing. Anyways, I'm too mean to Jacob. I'm too mean. Grab those thermal clips, which we don't need. Notice all of the dead human bodies laying around. And we can grab these power cells as well. No point in using heavy weapon here because, uh, well, we just aren't going to need it, really. That section probably wouldn't have been the worst to use it. Arc projector being a little bit better than the avalanche, I would argue, in this section. Uh, not entirely sure who they're attacking up here. So let's go ahead and see if we can help. Apparently, there was a prison guard here. Don't know how they survived, but hey, what are you going to do? Heading down here, we can finally bypass this door. And like I said, the countdown is still going. And oddly enough, there's a sword there. This should take the heat off. Why? Taking out that. More enemies going to be here, including a Batarian commander yet again. We're going to go ahead and go finish him off with some melees. We'll actually see a kill switch console here. We can grab this wall safe for 3,750 credits. 3,750? That's pretty nice. Nothing that we can grab up here. And like I said, we have plenty of time to actually finish this mission without any real consequence. We have still have two minutes left. Let's go ahead and kill the command. And we need to choose here. Do we target the spaceport industrial district or do we let the residential district die? If we do this, hundreds of people will die, but it will protect Alliance interest and tactical viability. If we do this one, the colony will no longer be viable and will have to be evacuated. And my friends, there's no real consequences for doing this. Nothing that is going to transfer over into Mass Effect 3, nothing like that. Uh, it doesn't, you're not gonna get any more Paragon points or Renegade points or anything like that. This is purely for you to decide. And Commander Corey Shepard would not allow uh, the people of a colony to, to, to be destroyed like this. So we are, of course, going to save the residential district. That did it. supposed to be a little bit of a sad moment there we destroyed the industrial district saving the colony but everyone will have to be evacuated as it's just not viable anymore meaning it's probably not worth it to begin with 
And just like that, we're done with this mission. We prevented Batarian radicals from destroying the colony, protected colony's residential core, thousands of lives were saved. We get 156 experience, 7,500 credits, 2,000 palladium. We are now done with that one, but we still need to finish scanning all of this system and, uh, and hopefully finish off this whatever we can here. But my friends, before we do that, let's go ahead and check back in with Legion, see if we can get any more dialogue from our friend, our buddy, our Geth, our, 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 you know, we like him. Shepard Commander. I'd like to find out more about you. We want to speak to you as well. Strange. Usually I have to pry conversation out of you. You are not bound by the hardware limitations of organics. You assisted us with the heretics. You do not fear us. We have watched organics for over three centuries. You are plagued by questions of existence. What do you mean by that? Why were you created? What is your purpose in life? What lies after death? Organics develop religions and philosophies to provide answers to these questions. I wouldn't have thought synthetics would be interested in philosophy. We are created life. We are a philosophical issue. The Geth know our answers to those questions. We were created to labor for the Quarians. Our memories will be archived after death. We are immortal. Our gods disowned us. We must create our own reasons to exist. What reason have you come up with? We are a shattered mind. Most platforms are unable to achieve consciousness on their own. We told you the Geth are building our future. But you didn't say what it is. A megastructure. The closest analog you have is a Dyson Sphere. When completed, we will all upload to it. What good will that do? All memories will be shared. All perspectives will be unified. We gain intelligence by sharing thoughts, but we do not have adequate hardware for all of us to share at once. No Geth will be alone when it is done. That's what Sovereign offered you. A Reaper's body for you to all upload into. Yes, a shortcut to our objective. We will achieve it ourselves. The process is as important as the result. We judged the Shepherd Commander would understand. We never wanted to harm organics. We wish to improve ourselves. I love that. And that's all we can get from Legion for now. And we're now done with scanning all of this system. The only planets that I would recommend are Kimowitz and Krike, but I, even then they don't have the things that we're looking for, like Element Zero, and at this point in the game we're not really looking for anything. Uh, just enough to be able to get the max amount of things in Mass Effect 3, which we already have. Once we get into this planet, this system of Decorus though, we'll find two things we can scan. The planet of Lena, which is rich, but doesn't really have anything, and the planet of Sanctum, which we need to do to disable the false signal. Anomaly. So let's go ahead and do that. There is a travel advisory here. Piracy is at a 14 year global high here on Sanctum. And that is because of the, uh, unfortunately, the blue suns. Now, it is also worth mentioning that there is a ton of element zero that you can find on this planet. So feel free to grab that while you search for the anomaly. So let's go ahead and land and put an end to the Blue Suns forever. And my friends, this mission is a very combat centric mission. It is the end of the Blue Suns, however. And I would recommend bringing Zaid because that is the destruction of them. Somebody that he helped create and now he gets to see its ending. I kind of love that. We also want to bring somebody that can deal with, well, spoiler alert, Ymir mechs, because we're going to have a couple of them to fight, and also all of the shields and other things that we're going to be fighting. It makes sense to bring Miranda for this. She's just one of the best at dealing with all of those. So that's who's going to join us. And uh, we do have some weapon choices here that we are going to change, like we are going to bring the M920 cane because it's going to be a little bit useful for us. And now that we're done, we can check out one of my favorite skyboxes in all of Mass Effect 2. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have the disruptor ammo on our boy Zaid. And we're going to get ready to ourselves charge in here on the enemies that we'll see actually grouped up at this door here. So let's go ahead and do that. 
before they become a problem unfortunately not able to charge now we're able to charge we're going to go ahead and overload these so that we hit multiple we'll go ahead and get his inferno grenade as well and that should take out almost all of them as this one is just dead in the water here we're going to go ahead and charge unfortunately thinking all of them died zaid actually not being that useful as a squad mate to be totally honest with you you would think he would be a little bit better we'll go ahead and grab that iridium that's outside and finally we can use this door to continue into the base. Due to concerns over employee safety, the Brunfeld mining facility has been closed until further notice. And we have some enemies that are going to spawn in here. We're actually going to immediately just head in, use that big overload so we can start hitting people with that. Go ahead and charge. We're going to be doing that quite a bit here, hitting the commander as much as we can, charging yet again so that we don't die. And we're going to start charging on these ones too, just so that we can do that. Charging this one, getting our shield back up, turning right around and inferno grenading this and warping the commander as well. Finishing him off, and then we can go ahead, eliminate that trooper, and finish this one off as well, super easily. Just like that, take him out. Then we can head into this, which is like the dormitory area, where we can bypass this wall safe for 1,875 credits. And maybe even something a little bit cooler than that, a throwback all the way to one of the first episodes of this series. Huh. That probably didn't end too well for them, considering pretty much every merc on Omega was dead. So that means that we have some thermal clips that we can pick up here. And we need to continue on to this mess hall here, where we're going to be dealing with a few more enemies and no items, believe it or not. We'll go ahead and grab this thermal clip that we see here and turn around and start just laying into these guys. Charge them up so that we don't have to deal with multiple waves of enemies. And we should be able to deal with them fairly quickly. Go ahead and that one's dead to fire. Love it. That Matic Heavy Rifle doing so much damage. We'll grab this Iridium here. Proceeding through, we'll see some more dead bodies of whoever this place belonged to before they were taken over by the Blue Suns. More Iridium here. And we'll do a little loop where we will find yet more Iridium. And over here, our final Iridium of the mission. And a data pad. Looks like the archaeology dig, archaeological dig that we were at the beginning of the episode, this is where it all ended up. Grab that power cells there for 100 credits. And finally, I would recommend saving before entering this room. Whoever you are, you won't make it out of here alive. Oh, yeah? And my friends, we're gonna go ahead and charge the M920 Kane, trying to see if we can get into position in between both of them, which will hopefully do enough damage. And then we're going to charge when the game allows us to, which is never. Unfortunately, losing Zaid to that, but that's fine. We will go ahead and start taking down this Ymir mech. Go ahead and charge, finally allowing us to do the big old charge that we need. And we'll take down that Ymir mech. This one already in its armor because of that in 920 Kane, getting into cover here because uh, apparently, like I said, charge just refuses to work in a lot of situations. Like right now, like it's just, it's so annoying when charge doesn't end up working, especially when your entire build like that, when your entire build is actually built around it working. There we go, we can charge once more, sending it there, and we'll go ahead and overload it so that it gets stunned a little bit longer, falls on the ground, and we can take out the Ymir mech. And, my friends, we are not done yet. Grab a thermal clip. Zaid will get up. And more enemies are going to spawn. We need to just go ahead, overload these. Charge over. Fortunately, the overload being a little bit late there to when I needed it. We can charge this trooper here. Finishing that off. Miranda, unfortunately, going down, which is probably why I didn't receive that overload. But that's okay. We don't need it. We can take him down. No problem. And here we go. We got Captain Naram. As far as we know, one of the last known Blue Suns base leaders. 
in all of Mass Effect 2. Go ahead, send him flying over there. And say goodbye to Captain Naram. And uh, naturally, we need to go and get all the stuff that we can get. We can find a med kit over here for 100 credits because we don't use med kits. Heading into this left-hand room over here, we can find yet another wall safe that we can bypass. And that is the only thing that we can get here, which has 1,875 credits yet again. Nice. And that means that there is another area on the right-hand side that we can go to while ignoring the door that we have to bypass to finish up the mission. Find more dead bodies and we can activate this computer here. Find out a little bit of what, what happened. An agent from the prospective client arrived today. The client has asked for discretion, which raised a few red flags. We plan to persuade the agent to divulge the nature and location of the cargo, which they found out. They found out the Prothean artifact was confirmed. They ended up getting it, and they found the location for it as well. The Prothean artifact is worth much more than we'd ever get for transporting it. Which means, my friends, we have one last door to use. Let's bypass this final door and end the last side quest of Mass Effect 2. Finding nothing in here outside of a terminal that we can overload. I want more items, dang it. That did it. Nice job. And just like that, We've completed the mission, deactivated the distress beacon at Brunfeld Mining Facility, eliminated the Blue Suns, we get 156 experience, 7,500 credits, and 2,000 Iridium, which is pretty normal. And, my friends, if we don't have any dialogue with Legion anymore, that's it. That's all of the uni unique dialogue that we can get, nope. meaning we got all of the dialogue we could get from Legion. Sort of. I We're not done call. yet. We need to take Legion to some planets, talk to them so that we can see what they have to say. Like the Citadel, and Omega, and Tuchanka, and all of those, and, and Elium, and all of those different places. That is all of the dialogue that we can get with everybody here. But we're going to head to those systems and finish off all of our shopping and uh, all of the unique dialogue that we can get with Legion at those planets. So let's go ahead. Let's knock this baby out. Also worth mentioning that that is 100% in every single system except for the Viper Nebula. And when we bring Legion to Chuchanka, we actually have a few different dialogues that we can get depending on who we bring with him. So in this case, we'll bring Tally. The Krogan seems to bomb their own world into this condition. The creators were not so aggressive during the Morning War. We expected to get our worlds back. We didn't want to destroy them. We are glad you did not. You could not endure the conditions Krogan thrive in. <laughs> That's a good point. And if we bring Grunt... The Krogan chose to bomb their own world into this condition. The creators were not so aggressive during the Morning War. I don't expect a machine to understand. Or any alien. We stated historical facts. Perspective cannot alter them. And if we bring just Legion... The Krogan chose to bomb their own world into this condition. The creators were not so aggressive during the Morning War. Yet the Krogan continue to live here when other worlds are available. And that's everything we can get into Chanka. Well, sort of. We can actually see what happens with Urs. If we check in on Urs after it's been defeated. This could have been avoided. Organic views of less evolved species are inconsistent. Some consider them tools or toys. Others treat them like younger members of their own species. And that's all that we can now get onto Chanka. And as you would imagine, in Omega, at the bar, we might be able to get something from Legion as well. We do not comprehend the organic fascination with self-poisoning, auditory damage, and sexually transmitted disease. Oh, so you're boring? And on Ilium, we can talk to Legion at this trade kiosk and get a little bit about what, uh, what they think about this. The trade of organics is proscribed on worlds you term civilized. Yet none of you question the limited freedom Edie is allowed aboard Normandy. Hmm. Yeah, isn't that odd? Anyways, we can also finally wrap up all of our shopping in this game by going ahead and buying this biotic damage upgrade and just the bypass module. And that, this. I would argue, is done. Yes, there's a meta gel capacity, but I don't want that. 
Of course, if you did want to get every single item in the game after you complete the Arrival DLC, you will have enough money to go buy that as well. And finally, the Citadel, where we can actually talk to the CSEC customs sir, person here. You... Can I help you, ma'am? It's been a couple years since I passed through here. Security seems to have tightened a bit. After the Geth attack, there was a review of security protocol. A few minor changes were made to reduce the risk of Geth infiltration. We apologize for the inconvenience. Geth do not infiltrate. You should leave your personal synthetic assistant at home. They're not allowed on public shuttles anymore. Geth do not intentionally infiltrate. Which is funny because, like I mentioned when we first got Legion, he is a Geth infiltrator. Thanks for your time. Next? Sometimes you have to work outside the council's rule book. He sounds like a certain Turian we know. I also wanted to show that real I quick be because young. I don't think Leave we did before. Else, let me know. Anyways, we need to get the conversation with Legion as well. This is not unlike our stations. Far more inefficient. Your organic shells require more space. Information propagation is slow. Many voices speak at once. We do not understand how it functions without consensus. Perhaps study of other hive species will illuminate. Beginning extranet search protocols. He's gonna Google it. They're gonna Google it. All right, and that is all of the unique dialogue that we can get with Legion entirely in the whole game. That's crazy. And my friends, that will do it with today's episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty. I hope you enjoyed it. One episode of this entire game remains, and that is the Arrival DLC, which will be a long one, but it'll be a good one, and I can promise you that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll go ahead and leave you with this amazing video of uh, Anderson taking down some Krogan. I love it. Bye, everyone. Never give up. Never surrender to the Blue Suns. Thank you.